My name is Simon Hindle. I'm a business development manager for Tuvsud. I have been in the industry for the last 15 years and I have been working with customers who are looking to take radio products to the marketplace. I have dealt with both ends of the spectrum, so at one end chipset manufacturers who are looking to validate their designs, all the way through to uh, university spin-outs, so these are guys that are taking a radio product to the market for the first time. These guys at this end pretty cognizant of what they have to do and their, and their obligations. The guys at the other end need an awful lot of support, a lot of hand-holding, so um, we, deal with, we deal with people across this spectrum. There is a, a non-regulatory approach. Uh, this is an approach that we're very used to in Europe. Uh, here a manufacturer effectively makes a, a claim, a claim of compliance, a declaration of conformity and they perform testing in order to generate evidence to substantiate that claim. So regions that are regulatory in nature, we're looking at North America, so the US and Canada, and we have places like Japan and Korea and China and Brazil. The, these countries all require you to do some tests, make a submission to an authority who's going to grant you an approval. Uh, whereas in Europe and some other regions, so Australia, New Zealand, uh, have this, have this non-regulatory approach. Manufacturers are obligated to make a claim of compliance and substantiate that with test evidence. So no matter where a manufacturer is looking to place a radio product, they're generally going to come up against three specific compliance requirements. One is that the radio is well behaved, it's transmitting on the right channel with the right frequency and the right power. Uh, there is going to be an electromagnetic compatibility requirement, so this means that the product is not going to cause interference to other equipment and in certain regions, Europe, um, is going to be able to withstand interference placed upon it. And then there is a, a safety requirement. So this is safety of electrical equipment, and this is quite far reaching. This looks at all of the hazards that the product presents. So not just electrical safety, but also chemical safety, RF exposure, mechanical safety, and so on. If you're gonna take your product into the US, um, you've got two regulatory authorities that you're gonna to have to think about, deal with. You've got the FCC who is going to look after anything to do with RF, so RF exposure and RF performance of your radio and EMC. And then you've got the Occupational Health and Safety Administration who are going to look after the safety related aspects of your product. So in Europe, different way of doing things. The onus here is on the manufacturer to perform tests. Um, the tests are listed in uh, something called an official journal. So each of the directives has an official journal for radio products that fall under the radio equipment directive. You would go and look at the radio equipment directive official journal and you would identify the relevant standards that you would apply to your equipment in order to generate the evidence that allows you as a manufacturer to meet your obligations and substantiate your claim of compliance, your declaration of conformity. Those looking to take a radio product to the marketplace have got two main options when it comes to product design. They can, they can start from scratch and design their product around a, an RF chipset, or they can use somebody else's radio module, which provides a, a, a fast and effective way to get a radio into a product. If you are designing from scratch, then you're going to have to have uh, experience within your team of, of high frequency design you're going to have uh, more to do when it comes to the compliance phase. There's going to be more testing to, to do, uh, which ultimately leads to increased costs. For those that don't have the skill set to take an IC through the design phase, radio modules are a really cost-effective route for manufacturers to add connectivity to their, to their products. Although radio modules provide manufacturers that are a really straightforward way to add connectivity to a product, 
manufacturers need to be cognizant of the fact that when they get to the compliance phase, there is guidance now from both the European Union and from the FCC that, that mind manufacturers to ensure that their products meet with the legislation. Whereas in the past, for North America, it was okay for you to drop a radio module into your product and then mark on your product, this product contains FCC ID of the module. Nowadays, the guidance is that you need to do some tests to make sure that when you've put your module into your product, that the product compliance is where it needs to be. So it's really important to select the right module manufacturer as your partner when you're going to embed one of their modules into the product. Why? Because you're actually going to base quite a lot of the evidence that you put into your technical file on the evidence that the module manufacturer is going to hopefully provide to you. So there are a few things that you can really think about um, asking them when, when you're going through the decision process. In North America, it's really straightforward to understand the compliance state of a module. It's public domain. You can go onto the FCC's website and you can enter the FCC ID of the module and you can effectively see a whole host of information about that module. In Europe, it's, 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 it's not the same. Manufacturers who CE mark their radio modules are obligated to provide you with a declaration of conformity. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to have a look at that declaration of conformity and you need to make sure that the standards listed in that declaration of conformity are current against the current le legislative requirements. Manufacturers are not obligated to provide you with test reports. However, you as the integrator of the module are going to rely on some of the module evidence in your technical file. So you really need to have access to those test reports. You are also going to need to know how to put the module into its test modes. Okay, so one of the things that you are minded to do by the guidance documents is, is perform some tests on the end product that ensure that the product is compliant. And the, the, they use the word assess in the documentation, but effectively you do an assessment by performing some limited testing on the RF performance of the product. We've talked about that it's really important for manufacturers integrating radio modules to get sufficient relevant documentation from the module suppliers and, and test modes and, and it's, this is incredibly important as well when we start to look further afield so, so, so into other regions where we want to move, move these products. Lots of regions will require you to submit the test evidence for the radio module. So this is the evidence that you've, you've performed on the product in conjunction with the evidence for the radio module. Uh, and then other regions are going to require you to actually send samples of your product with instructions on how to, how to fire the test modes to, to enable those countries to perform testing on, on, on your product. So what's, what's the key message here? The key message is it's really important for people looking to take radio products to the marketplace, whether that be a chipset or a, or a module, to start to talk to their compliance partners as, as early as possible in the process. We'll be able to help you identify the requirements. We'll be able to give you guidance on what testing is required. We'll be able to help you with any documentation requirements. Uh, we can also support you when you're looking outside of the European Union North American requirements into further afield and provide you with services that allow you to take your product to you know, the global marketplace. Here at Tufsud, we have a fantastic team who are going to support you and work with you through the complete compliance journey.